So <clears throat> we have both vertical alignment and horizontal alignment. Now it's time to start calculating cross sections. Before you can start calculating cross sections, you need to have a drawing of your standard cross section. The standard cross section is determined and decided by using the rule books and it's drawn in plain AutoCAD uh, to begin with. Uh, this is a sketchy version of a standard cross section. This is just to show you the cross section that I'm going to do in this example. Uh, there's the regular or usual information about width and name and besides this I have added the names of the different elements minus 1.1, 2.1, 4.1, 4.2, 6.1 which are the names that we are going to use to describe the cross section inside the road model software. In your standard cross section the drawing that you are going to make for your project of course you shouldn't add these different names it's just for explaining uh, inside the road model software each of these elements has to be described with a width and a slope and we have all the information here so let's just start up the road modeling software found under road and road design. You can see this is a road model for road 01. If I just close this and enter Nova Point project identification, it is this one. So if you don't have a road model to begin with, you create a new empty one and call it the name of your road. Remember, you can have several road models in a project. Depending on how many roads you are having, there could be the main alignment, some crossing roads, some intersections, some bicycle path, and stuff like this. So you, you may actually have a lot of different road models within one project. To begin with, inside road design, we have to apply a horizontal alignment and a vertical alignment. And this is done in File and Properties. We select our alignment, which is the road one that we have just designed. And we now get the information down here from which change to which change we have a horizontal alignment and vertical alignment. Now the thing is with cross section calculation, you need to have both horizontal alignment giving you the xy coordinates but also the vertical alignment giving you the set coordinate. So if you have a stretch where you don't have one of the two mentioned, you won't be able to calculate. Now to find the first change, we just keep the zero and then it will tell us automatically that 15 is the first change where we have both vertical and horizontal and the last change where we have both is 2903.24 so this will be our calculation interval okay now it's time to set up this calculation of elements and this is done in data and road surfaces for the moment it's empty so we need to add by right clicking we need to First of all, add a carriageway, lane minus 1.1. And if we look at our drawing, we can see that it should be 4 meters in width and the slope minus 0 0.025, 2.5% away from the center line. And the start change is 0 and the end change is just big just bigger than our real end change. This assures us that the calculation will at least happen within our interval. This was the carriageway on the left side. We will now add the verge 2.1. Notice that it's a minus because it's on the left side. Change zero 
width 2.5 the slope minus 5% um, or 5% the minus here is because it's going away or down compared to the center line level then we need to add channels and we will add the elements but to begin with we will not put any values inside it so just zero zero and zero and 4.2 zero 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 and zero so now we have our carriageway our verge and our channel then we need to explain how to react if we are in a cut area making the minus 6.1 and how to react in a fill area making the element minus 7.1 so we will add cut and the width we don't know the width because the terrain level varies so we'll just put in a line and it will calculate to terrain the slope though we know it should be 0 0.5 in cut and if we apply our fill area we will have the same but the slope will be negative so now we have described our left side and now to the right side just the same uh, instead of doing it all over we copy to opposite side all of the elements that we have made like this and then we will see we have the same information on the right side so now we have determined our uh, cross-section surface okay to this then we need to give some information about the pavement and this is found in road pavement and <coughs> we need to apply a template name so just call it standard start change is not needed here um, here we usually just put in the overall thickness of our pavement in the sub base uh, field so here we will have 0 0.9 as an example on the shoulder no pavement on the right side 0 0.9 and then because of the calculation we need to insert a filter course being 0 0.001 and this should be everywhere and the rest should just be zero So like this and apply and OK. Now we should be able to calculate our cross-section design for the first time and this takes place in model and build and there's some few settings we'll get back to these later but the first one is the interval uh, which in which it calculates the, the detailed cross sections for each 20 meters and that's okay so we will build now <coughs> in this result table it's very important that you have no errors or no serious errors if you have errors we, you have to go and check and see if you can correct them so let's go and see what these errors are about it says incomplete road pavement data so now we know where to go look um, 
to see how we can correct the error. We'll do this in uh, just a moment, but before this we will we would like to see the result, and you can do this by viewing and cross sections, and you will be able to see the cross section for all changes during the project. And you can obviously see that we don't have any road pavement, so this is what we're going to correct afterwards. This is one way to view your result. Another way, way is to go to perspective mode. You will have a perspective of the road and the terrain, and you can go for a drive just to see how your road is situated in the landscape. This will help you optimizing your tracing and your aesthetics later on if you want to. It's a good way of understanding how it's going to look in the future.